All right, hi folks, as, um, as friends are trickling in, it's great to have you all here. Um, we'll give folks a couple minutes to just get settled. Um, since you all already introduced yourselves in the first room chat, I'm not gonna make you all do that again, um, but as you're finding your way to your seats or um, getting settled, um, you'll need a few supplies for our workshop this morning. So please feel free to take the time now to grab them. You'll need um, something to write with, like a pencil. Um, you'll also need a piece of paper. It can be a scrap piece of paper. It can be a piece of paper in your notebook. Um, I've got my plain, plain, plain notebook here. Um, it can be the back of an envelope. Whatever you've got is great. And then something that will be really essential for today to have our full experience is some colors. So I've got some color pencils with me. I've also got some markers. I might kind of use a combination of the two. So be sure that you've got those, um, those nearby and available. And we will get started in just a moment. And we'll do, we'll do some warming up to get to know each other in a different way. So you don't have to introduce yourselves each and every time you join a workshop this morning. Okay. Thank you so much. All right, let's see. Good morning, Heather and Ikea. I just realized there are so many messages in the chat that I wasn't keeping yeah. up with. Hi, Chris and Ina. So happy you're here. Mary Lee, um, we got that interpreter going for you. Um, let's see. Joseph, so happy you're here. Yeah, and feel free on your own to pin um, specific videos that you would prefer to see. So you can always pin for yourself our ASL interpreter, or you can sort of go back and forth. Um, and it is officially 1020, which is our go time. So I'm inclined to get started. If folks are still trickling in, we'll welcome them in as well. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and begin by introducing myself. My name is Dina Rappaport, and I work as a museum educator and coordinator of family programs at the National Gallery of Art here in Washington, DC. And so hopefully you came to our session today to at least be exposed to art or do a little bit of art. And as I mentioned, as folks were just joining our session, you'll need a few supplies and I'll repeat these a couple times. Um, you'll need a piece of paper to write on. We'll be doing something very short and simple with colors. So make sure you've got some paper, some coloring materials, I've got colored pencils, I also got markers. And um, also a pencil, that'll be really helpful for today's session. So um, here's my pencil. So as we're getting started, um, our workshop today is meant to be participatory. So please feel fully immersed in the experience as we engage with the chat, with our ideas, with our creativity. We're going to talk about curricular connections at the end of our session. And if we run out of time for um, a lengthier Q&A, I would love for us to <clears throat> set up a time one-on-one -on -one to talk after today and um, answer some of those questions for you. So during our time, we are going to take the story and the lessons of um, a DC, former DC public school art teacher by the name of Alma Thomas. And for today's purposes, I'm going to call her an everyday hero, everyday leader. And we'll use her story to connect with this idea of empathy building. Now we often think of empathy as this person to person relationship. And I pulled up our quick Google, first, first hit that comes up on Google definition of empathy. And today I wanna to expand our idea of empathy and use it to connect person to place, person to home, to our neighborhoods, to our community. And ask this question of what happens when we extend our concept of empathy to include our personal physical context. And in this case, I'm really delighted that we will be connecting it with Washington DC. So to make our learning personal and to ground it in the physical, we're going to be doing, or at least getting started on doing um, a short hands-on making experience, which is why um, I've invited you to bring some materials to today's session um, as a way of feeling a connection to our city. So um, we'll, we'll need all of those in a little bit. For now, just have your pencil and your piece of paper nearby. Um, let's get started with a warm-up question. Since you already had to introduce yourselves in our first welcome Zoom room, 
Um, let's go ahead and find your way to your chats and chat in um, an answer to this two part warm up question. The first part of this question, I'd like to hear about what your favorite place is in Washington, DC. And if you're not DC based, because I realize some folks are actually joining us from other places around the country, which is so wonderful. Go ahead and just pick a favorite place if that's a favorite place in your home, your neighborhood, if it's your backyard. Um, so that's the first part of this. The second part of this question that we're warming up with today is if you had to pick one color that you associate with that place, um, one color that could represent that place, what would that color be? Um, so go ahead and we're gonna add this as a note in your notebook. So I'm just gonna show you my notebook here. I'm just gonna switch my camera over here. I'm just gonna make a note in the corner. My favorite place in Washington, DC, I'll say it out loud just to help with an example is actually the Arboretum. It's um, a really wonderful place that I like to go to kind of in the, to relax. And um, so I'm just gonna write Arboretum somewhere in the corner of my piece of paper. Maybe I'll actually write that in a darker pen so folks at least have a chance of seeing that. And there's one color that I associate with that place, that place, that would be um, like a dark forest green, just thinking about how green and lush it is. So I'm adding that to, adding that to my piece of paper. I wonder if folks would be willing to actually, once they've got their idea down, add um, their favorite place plus color into the chat. Um, thank you so much, Akia, for kicking us off. Anacostia Park, yellow, um, the Nature Education Center near your old home, green, um, Virginia, joining us from Pittsburgh, your favorite place is the Strip District, a mile long strip of eclectic shops and stores and cultural restaurants. Virginia, yeah, think about that other part too, about maybe what color you would associate with that. Um, yeah, Garfield Terrace Rooftop, green. Um, National Mall, green. We've got lots of green. Oh, Virginia, you've got your color, yeah, pink. Um, Pat's thinking about a uh, favorite reading tree near a hiking path in Rock Creek Park and colors Blue ocean skies. These are really, really wonderful. Kenilworth Aquatic Gardens for Charles, blue. MLK Memorial Monument, sky blue. Yeah, keep popping those in because I'd love to hear. I'd love to hear what folks are thinking about and what color, what place they're thinking about and what color they're connecting that with. Um, so as you continue to pop into the chat, your responses. Um, I'm going to go ahead and bring up our next slide so that we can meet and learn about our everyday hero, our everyday leader, Alma Thomas. Alma Thomas was an art teacher at Shaw Junior High School on Rhode Island Avenue Northwest for 35 years. She was someone who deeply cared about her community, her students, and she encouraged all who knew her to find the beauty in the world, in their neighborhood, and in their lives. So I want us to back up a little bit and actually think about who is Alma Thomas. And I'm curious if we have any folks in our group who are familiar with her, her story, or her name. So if you are, go ahead and pop in either if your video is on a thumbs up, or you can add a reaction button with like a, a thumbs up reaction button, because I'm curious if this is a familiar name to some of you, or if we're meeting Alma Thomas perhaps for the first time. I'm getting an enthusiastic yes from Jennifer, so. All right, um, curious if there's anyone else who's connecting with her name a little bit. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna pull up a picture of her home. This is 1530 15th Street Northwest. It's a place that still exists today. Her house is actually currently on the market. Um, so I brought up a real estate image, an image from her real estate listing of the home that's you know it's changed hands since, but just so we can see what it looked like back then and now. And Alma Thomas, as an artist and art teacher, she made art in her spare time when she wasn't teaching. And so her kitchen table served as her studio. And she would look outside of her window onto her garden and was inspired by the colors, the patterns, the shapes that she observed in nature. Alma Thomas um, expressed at one point that she fondly remembered the holly tree that was within view just outside of her window. And she really loved studying the light that trickled in through the trees. And through this, through her art, we can see that she was someone who took time to slow down and notice the details all around her in her context, kind of beginning to develop that sense of empathy for place. 
So let's bring up her photo again, just so we can look at her as I tell you a few short vignettes about her life. So we're gonna travel back in time to 1943. This is when she's 52 years old. She helps to found the Barnett Aiden Gallery here in Washington. This was DC's first integrated gallery where black and white artists exhibited together. And the gallery served as this community space for artists like herself to gather, to share ideas, to discuss the latest concepts in modern art. Um, later in her life, we're gonna jump forward, fast forward to the 1970s. We'll be doing a little bit of time hopping today. Um, she concentrates on art full-time once she retires. And she goes on to become the first African-American woman to have a solo exhibition at the Whitney Museum of Art in New York in 1972. And this is when she's 80 years old. We often think about um, being 80 years old, perhaps being in sort of the final season, the later season of your life. And here she is making this landmark um, accomplishment and groundbreaking accomplishment at the Whitney Museum in her 80s. And I'll say that this wasn't the only barrier that she had to break throughout and within her lifetime. So let's kind of go back in time and explore some of that. Um, I wonder if there's a volunteer in our group who wouldn't mind just quickly unmuting and sharing this quote that I've brought from Alma Thomas on our screen. When I was a little girl in Columbus, there were things we could do and things we couldn't. One of the things we couldn't do was go into museums, let alone think of hanging our pictures there. My, how things have changed. Just look at me now. Thank you so much. So it gives us a sense of what Alma Thomas had experienced throughout her life. So as we back up a little bit and get deeper into her biography, she and her three younger sisters and her parents moved to Washington DC in 1907 seeking relief from racial violence, as well as educational opportunities. Being from Columbus, Georgia at the time, African-American girls could only attend school through grade nine. And I really think about this moment and the courage that it takes for her, for her family to arrive in a new city and to make it home. And then to go on and become such a force, such a community force throughout the decades as she, um, continues to ground her life here in Washington, DC. She continues to break so many barriers. She attends Howard University, becoming Howard's first fine arts graduate in 1924. And throughout this entire time, throughout the decades of her life, throughout her teaching career, she's constantly evolving her artistic style. And upon retirement, this is when Thomas finally develops her signature, more abstract style. So instead of talking just about her, let's go ahead and dive into some of these works of art. I'm gonna bring this one up here. So this is the earliest example of a work of art that I brought for us to look at. This isn't quite her signature style just yet, but I brought it because I wanted us to think about um, how she is connecting to her city, how she's translating her experiences of being a resident of DC into her painting. And we're looking at an image of Rock Creek Park for those folks who are not from DC. Rock Creek Park is this giant park that kind of spans the city and is a place for people to recreate, to hike, to um, go to the water, jog, et cetera. And um, as she shifts into her decades of her 70s and her 80s, her work becomes much more focused in capturing her impressions or her memories, often of nature, sometimes of other events of history or music, but primarily through color. And so we're gonna begin talking a lot about color. And so we'll dive right into some of those examples. I've brought for us to look at at first, this work called Tiptoe Through the Tulips. And I want us to take a moment to take in this work of art. So wherever you are, however you're seated, go ahead and just find a comfortable place to sit. Maybe relax your shoulders down your back, take a deep breath in. Exhale out and just begin to let your eyes wander all over the surface of this picture. Okay. And I want to know from you, maybe okay. by popping into the chat, what word or phrase comes to mind that you can use to describe the visual experience of looking at tiptoe through the tulips? 
what word or phrase might you use to describe the visual experience of looking at this painting. And just let your eyes flutter and wander all over the surface and allow yourself to be really curious about what you're looking at. All right, thanks Catherine, thinking about rainbow, Jenny Lee, thinking of joyous, Akia, vibrant journey. Yeah, a word or a phrase to capture what the visual experience is of looking at this. Calm, spring, sweet smells. Thank you all so much for bringing these ideas. Fulfilling and connection, thoughts, soak in. Really ex excellent words to describe this. Thank you so much, keep those coming. Connectivity. The path to well-being, a beautiful path forward, delight. Rhythmic walkway, textured pathways, these are really wonderful, really colorful ways of describing the vibrancy and experience of looking at this work. Ina's thinking about the word calm. I'm going to bring up a couple other examples um, and feel free to keep popping words into the chat as they're coming up for you. Um, this one here is called Autumn Drama, and you can see how she, she's really focusing on color. She's not working focusing on replicating any more nature, the park itself, the trees, how tall they all are, how wide they are, the path around the trees, but really she's interested in just focusing on the sensation of color and filling her canvases from one side all the way to the other side, top to bottom, with patches and patchworks of patterns and color to capture that experience or that impression of nature. As we go further and further into this almost color explosion that Alma Thomas creates, this color-filled world that she creates. I'm bringing in some examples of works that represent places within DC. This one is called Orangery, and it's thought that it might refer to the citrus greenhouse in Dumbarton Oaks, which is another natural area here in Washington, DC in Georgetown that Alma Thomas frequented. And I think it's really powerful to think about um, the footprint that she's making around DC. You know, we know where she lived for 71 years on 15th Street Northwest. Um, we know the parks that she frequented. She would go to Rock Creek Park to, to find inspiration, Dumbarton Oaks. And she's translating all of these experiences into her paintings using color as her primary tool or her primary language to communicate with us, with her viewers of her work. Um, this one here, perhaps a bit of a more known place for those of us who are not from Washington, D.C., called Spring Flowers near Jefferson Memorial. It seems that she's turned her shapes. Um, she's turned her shapes around to create this circle, this radial shape, um, but again, captures really the color, the vibrancy of her experience of going to um, the Jefferson Memorial during the springtime. Um, through this different arrangement of the same patchwork of colors. And here in many of these works, often what she's doing is taking a large brush, a large brush, paintbrush, and creating these marks, these brush strokes. And so she's really not worried about capturing what the Jefferson Memorial looked like, what the garden looked like, the people who were in the garden, herself in the garden. She's thinking about just the experience of color, the sensation of color. Virginia, thank you for adding some more words in. Schoolyard walls, spring flowers, reminds you of the sacred wheel of the Sioux. Yeah, so many, so many connections that we can make because of um, how resonant color can be for ourselves and in our lives. This one takes us back a little bit to Alma Thomas to her childhood. Um, she calls this one babbling brook and whistling poplar trees. Again, a reference to nature, but this time it's a reference to a creek that she grew up nearby in Columbus, Georgia. She came to Washington, D.C. when she was um, in her teens, so she spent her formative years in this place and has strong connections and strong memories. So she's taking these memories and she's going back to the colors and the sensation and the rhythm of what it felt like to be there. And here in this one, it's a little bit different because there's maybe some more movement. There's some more um, different shapes that we're seeing, curves with straight edges together to really capture the sensation of this babbling brook. 
And I like thinking about what Alma Thomas might have been thinking about, or maybe the memories that were coming to her as she would have been painting. You know, you're talking, you're popped into the chat, emotional support, calm, soothing, healing from Jennifer, calm from Teresa. Yeah, so again, so many emotion words that we can connect with this experience of looking at color-filled paintings. So all the works that we've seen so far show how Alma Thomas took the time to observe her Washington DC world or to return to her memories of her childhood. And she translated these impressions and feelings of a place using color as her primary tool. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen now. So I'd like for us to now move on to the hands-on portion of our workshop and use Alma Thomas, use her story, think about the things she overcame and accomplished throughout her life as inspiration for our own making. So we're gonna be using our own memories or impressions of a place in Washington, DC or whichever, whichever city or whichever place you connected with when you first pop that into the chat. Um, and through this exercise, I hope that spending time in focused detail, really thinking about the colors and the feelings of a place can foster a sense of deeper personal connection for you to that place, or perhaps this idea of, um, of empathy, connection and empathy to um, places in our city or places in our lives, whether it's that you chose the backyard of your childhood home or um, a favorite park or a favorite place to walk in your city. So I want you now to go back to that image or memory that you shared during our warm up of your favorite place. And I'm going to switch my camera again to my overhead camera so that you can see my sketch pad again. I'm going to spotlight myself for now. If that spotlight is distracting or you need to spotlight somewhere else, um, feel free to just go to the upper right hand corner to view. And then you can select a gallery, or you can um, also feel free to pin other speakers if you need to see the ASL interpreter or whomever during your session. Um, but I want us to now um, grab your markers or your colored pencils or your colors because we're going to be using those. And I'm going to pull mine, pull mine up here nearby. I've got some markers as well. I want us to. Um, Think back to that favorite place that you noted at the beginning and return to that list of um, that first color that you wrote down, that first color that you connected with, that you associated with that favorite place. And I want you to make a list of at least three colors. So try to add two more colors to your list, if not more. These are colors that you might associate with that favorite place. Um, I had mentioned to you all that my favorite place that I had listed down is the Arboretum. And I'm just grabbing a thicker marker here, the Arboretum. And I'm thinking a lot about um, when the azaleas are in bloom, how much I enjoy seeing the vibrant um, magentas. And there's some really spectacular oranges. And this is just a list for you. You don't feel, don't feel the pressure to share that in the chat. This is just for you to do some pre-work, some brainstorming as we, um, as we think about as we think about our favorite place and if it's helpful if you've got a picture of that favorite place I actually brought a picture of the azaleas for me just so I can remember what they are it's a photograph that I took of going to see the azaleas in bloom and it's helping me remember that there are also lots of different shades of purple so I'm going to add purple to my list all right so once you you can have at least three if not more colors just this is a brainstorm just for you so that you can do, um, so we can get into our making. Um, so that's our first list that we're gonna do. That's about color. The second list that I'd like for us to make is about um, our feelings connected to this place. And I want you to make a list of three feeling words that you connect with that favorite place. So these could be um, some of the sensations or feeling words that maybe were similar to some of the experiences that you felt connecting to Alma Thomas's work. But just make a list of at least three feeling words. 
And I'm gonna talk this one out loud while all of you are working in your notebooks in case that can be helpful for you as you're thinking about feeling words. Now, maybe these feeling words are actually other sensations. Like maybe it calls upon a, a sense of smell or of sound as well. So bringing in any of the senses can also be a powerful experience. Um, I'm thinking about this experience of feeling really serene when I'm looking at the azaleas, when I'm at the arboretum. I'm also thinking about how private it feels, even on um, some of the most crowded days. There's all these different corners where the trees are, where you can kind of tuck in and out of places and how private and almost exclusive it feels to be in that space. And another feeling word for me is um, energized. I think all of the colors help me um, give me the sense of energy. So I'm gonna add energize to my, to my sheet of paper. So, so far you have at least three colors that you associate with your favorite place. And you have three feeling words that you associate with that favorite place. And those feeling words could be sounds, they could be smells, um, they could just be sensations as well. However you want to interpret that. All right, can I get a thumbs up in your video camera or in your reactions button if you are with me? If you have your at least list of three and your other list of three. Okay, I'm getting lots of hearts and lots of thumbs up. So I know you're all with me and I appreciate that. So thank you so much for that feedback. So let's go ahead and begin to, to make together. Um, I'm gonna use my black marker just so that you can see this a little bit better. Um, but I want you to feel free to use whatever color if you wanna dive straight to color right now or just begin with using your pencil, um, whatever is gonna help you feel the most successful. And we're gonna start by making a square with your pencil or your writing implement at the center of your paper. Now for today's purposes, we're just gonna make this like not too big of a square um, because we don't have a whole classroom hour together. We just have our 45 minutes. But of course, when you work on this with your students, you can choose as, um, as much time or as little time that you want them to work on this project. And that can help determine the scale of the um, piece of paper or material that you're working with. But like, for, like I said, for today, let's just work a little bit small so that we can at least get a sample, get a taste of, um, of this activity inspired by Alma Thomas and um, the applications for it. And what we're going to do, and remember um, this square is gonna represent our canvas. Alma Thomas painted um, using paint on canvas. And we saw in so many of her works that she worked right up to the edge. So we're going to fill our squares, our pretend cam canvas right up to the edge with color. And those colors can come from your original brainstorm list. Maybe the colors that are coming to mind now are new colors that are inspiring you as you've been thinking more and more deeply about this place. You can go wherever this, um, this thought process, this brainstorm takes you. And as we begin, we're going to begin making marks of color to represent that favorite place. Now your favorite place is gonna be different from my favorite place. So we're not, our works of art are not gonna look the same. Um, and also the marks that we make are not gonna look the same. I want you to think back to how different it was looking at the spring flowers near the Jefferson Memorial, where there were just patches, almost like lines of color going around in a circle how different that was from the experience of looking at the Babbling Brook picture, um, sorry, Babbling Brook painting that um, she paints based on her childhood memories of the creek near her childhood home and how in that one she made a lot of different shapes. And it was really just about focusing on color. Maybe you're going to focus on one color today, maybe just two, maybe three. But I invite you to think about how fewer colors can express big ideas. And this is your chance to think about the mark you want to make. Um, we're not gonna worry today about replicating that favorite place, replicating that walkway in, in um, your favorite park. You don't have to make it look realistic. This is just about filling your canvas or pretend canvas for today with color. So I'm gonna pull out, um, and hopefully you'll be able to see this. I'm gonna pull out three colors from my colorful, my coloring materials. And these are the three colors that I was thinking about. Magenta, I've got this pinky color here. 
um, an orange, and I've also got a purple, and those are going to help me think about the azaleas. And I'm also going to bring up my picture of the azaleas onto my screen here. And I'm just going to kind of look at it. If you're working from a picture, that's great. If you're working from memory, that's wonderful too, because it's all about the sensations that you're collecting. And our goal here isn't to recreate your visual reality exactly as it is in your memory or in your photo, but to translate what you observe of, of your photo into shapes, into colors, into patterns, these marks that can convey the memory or feeling of that place. And if you're not really sure where to start with your marks, you can always, always go to start with Alma Thomas's marks, just the flat, broad brush stroke or um, marker stroke um, that she would use in a pattern, whether it was an up-down pattern or a left-to-right pattern or a circular pattern. For me, I'm thinking about how um, the trees were one single color when they blossomed with their azaleas, but there were these almost patches or sprigs. So I'm just gonna make, for me, marks of purple right up onto the edge to represent our, my first purple tree, my first purple azalea tree. And some of my marks are actually becoming these like squiggle scratch marks. And I'm kind of excited about working this way. I'm not necessarily working with a plan. Um, and of course I'm working more quickly today than maybe I would if I had a whole classroom hour together or we were doing this as a full lesson, but filling up my space. And I feel like I've got a lot of purple so far and I really wanna move on to magenta. So I hope that you all can get started on your drawings and thinking about what colors you chose in your brainstorm and maybe how you might mark them. And maybe those are colors that are in the form of circles. Maybe there's, those are different shapes or different marks. And as you're working, you might think about the visual experience that you're creating and maybe going back to some of those feeling words, maybe those words that helped you think back to that memory, maybe how your colors can help convey that memory. Um, if, you've, if you're thinking about a place that's always busy, chaotic, maybe you're thinking about a really busy, chaotic um, picture. And if you're thinking about something that's very calm, maybe your lines are gonna be more fluid or more separate, um, depending, on the, depending on the place that you're depicting. I'm gonna move on to my orange color here. And I'm not gonna try to capture every single color of my experience of going to see the azaleas at the Arboretum. I'm just gonna use it to help capture that feeling. I'm actually noticing some of my marks are sort of turning into these V's that are colored in in the wide area. And I'm kind of excited because I feel like that azalea shape does have this intricate fold. And I'm enjoying how I'm sort of discovering my mark as I'm working. And it's gone from these sort of short staccato marks like Alma Thomas, and I'm kind of developing a mark of my own. I might go back and add in some purple in this area. Again, we're working small for today just for the purposes of our time constraints. But if we were in a classroom, we could think about how as a group, you could extend this to a classroom project where maybe the class takes a walk together and connects to decides on or connects to a favorite place. And then everybody gets to do one specific color of that place. Or you can think about this being a really individual choice. Um, maybe, maybe everyone's working on one single piece of paper that you might be able to hang on a bulletin board or help create visually. I'm kind of thinking about how these trees really come together. So I might just bring my purples to float all over. So keep working. It's about 10.52, and I know we're gonna be closing out at about 11 with, um, as we wrap up and reflect and do some evaluation. So I know that this um, isn't the full experience of being able to make in the classroom, but hopefully you're beginning to get a sense or a taste of how you can connect to place by using color. I really like doing this 
um, kind of activity exercise with students because it takes the pressure off creating, um, creating something that visually replicates a space. I think there's a lot of pressure in making something look photorealistic. And that's often why students turn to photography as a way to make that connection. Um, this is really a chance for students to think about, to isolate and think about just the experience of color or the experience of feeling translated through color as they're working. I'm just gonna go back to my photo here and remember how, yeah, there was a lot of purple that was like off in the background. So I'm excited that my purple is kind of floating throughout. And as you're working, you might discover how repetitive brush strokes or repetitive marks of a colored pencil or of a pen or marker um, can be really powerful tools for slowing down. We're not concentrating right now on how something looks realistically, but just concentrating on the feeling. And perhaps it's almost like this meditative practice of just plotting down marks along the page. This can be a really nice way to help bring a calming energy or a calming sensation to your classroom and also help you connect to this idea of feeling. It can be almost a social emotional exercise as well as one that can have curricular connections to art, art history, to DC history, to US modern history. African American history. I'm gonna go back to some of my purple marks and just make them a little bit thicker now that I've kind of figured out what my what my signature mark is gonna look like. Of course, my colored pencils are rolling all over my page. And I'm really excited how my my canvas or my mini canvas is so um, is so full of color, but of course yours might not be full of color. Yours might be just a single color that you're using by moving your pencils back and forth or your markers back and forth um, or your mark. Um, and I'll also add that if you are working with students, depending on what materials you have, this can also be done as collage. You can also have students practice cutting if they're working on their motor skills, practice cutting pieces of paper, or even just ripping pieces of paper too. I think the ripping can be really satisfying because again, it um, it allows or invites students to not worry so much about perfection, but just to worry about that experience. And I think that sensory experience of ripping pieces of paper to get out from each other can be really powerful and thinking about how they might connect with each other. They can practice gluing and pasting if they're a little bit younger. But as you're working, um, as I've been kind of mentioning ways or applications and connections to your classroom, I think this is a project that you can replicate easily in your classes when you're thinking about lessons on DC history, on lessons on nature or ecology, on art and art history, like I mentioned before. And the activity is definitely scalable. I'm also thinking about this concept, and we're going to pretend like this is a larger piece of paper for a second, that this concept can be um, made into a group activity and you give each person, you assign each person um, a specific color um, or decide on the mark that they want to make. And each of them contributes their mark and their color on a piece of paper. And you can almost connect them together on your bulletin board or on a classroom board um, like a paper quilt um, to showcase to showcase the variety of colors and experiences of um, what you have been studying. Um, for older students, I think this can be a really great exercise to um, pair with a short writing experience or an artist statement where your artist students are invited to write about how it feels to slow down, to sit in nature, and to focus on a few details in a place that feels important to them. I think so often we're asking our students to do a lot of things all at once or to be these master multitaskers. And this is actually an experience that requires the reverse. Slowing down, connecting to one idea, communicating something really profound using just fewer or a few colors or tools at your disposal. 
And I think the really key or important part of this is choice that there your students are able to choose for them a place that feels really powerful to them or a place that feels very connected for them. Um, so we are reaching 11 o'clock and I want us to take um, a few moments to kind of wrap up and digest a little bit from what we've been doing. So I realize that this definitely is not enough time to finish or accomplish what we've been doing. I'm just gonna switch my camera over to my face again. Um, but I thought that this could be a moment to just take pause. So pull your pencils away from your hands, set them to the side, take pause and just take a look at what you've created so far. Um, we've spent a focused several minutes just looking and thinking about this place, thinking about our colors and distilling this down into our mini miniature canvas. Um, and I wanted us to, wherever we are, wherever we're situated to actually take a group photo. So if you're someone who has the capacity to turn on your camera, I thought it would be really fun for us to celebrate the progress that we've made, whether it's just that you've made a few simple marks or that you filled your um, mini canvas at this point, that we could celebrate that by taking a group photo to, um, to showcase our accomplishments and also to celebrate that place that is so beloved and connected to you. So if you are able to turn on your camera and also hold up your work of art at the same time and have your face in the picture, I know that is like the biggest, the, the biggest task in multitasking, um, go ahead and do so. I'm going to count to three and invite us all to hold up your works of art, um, put your face, hopefully pop your face into the picture for a second and we're gonna take a screenshot together. So don't, don't stop smiling, let's see. Uh, great art, wow, amazing. And Dr. Nora said in the morning how this has been a tough time and art is the best, best for healing. Thank amazing. you, got it. Mm -hmm. Thank you all so much for um, flipping your cameras on so we can at least have this moment of togetherness and of gallery sharing. Um, okay, so a couple orders of business as we conclude and reflect. Um, I wanted to do just a quick reflection. So I'm going to bring up my screen again, just for a moment. We've got a few moments and I want to take advantage of our time together. I wanna take a few moments to reflect. And so if you could pop open your chat or feel free to unmute yourself. We've got time for maybe two or three, two or three speakers to share one, one from one of these three prompts. As you reflect on this experience, this process of making, um, either something that you valued about this process, something that was challenging about this process or something that you learned from this process. Again, you can pop that into the chat or we have just a few moments to think about, um, to think about and share with our group if anyone feels inclined to unmute and share using their voice. And don't feel compelled to respond to all three prompts. You can just pick one that's connecting for you. Tim, thanks for your feedback. Um, I'm glad this works with first graders. <laughs> This is a great application. So something that you valued, something that was challenging or something that you learned. I'd love to hear your reflections. I valued the calming nature of this activity. Thank you so much, Catherine. Yeah, this feeling of calm that you were able to cultivate through this process. Yeah, Mary Lee capturing, um, not the replica, not snapping that photo, but capturing the aura of a place. Um, yeah, Heather, the application for all levels and abilities. And if folks have questions that they're coming up with, I realize we're down to our last three minutes, but if folks do have questions, feel free to pop them into the chat. And if I don't get to them, I'll read through our, um, read through our chat at the end of our session and I can always respond to you individually or we can set up a time to chat. Um, as you're popping those reflections in, thank you so much for being so willing to share and open about this process with us. I want to just wrap up by sharing, wrap up this workshop by sharing that Alma Thomas continues to be this beloved and respected figure in American history, American art, African-American history, African-American art. Um, her, 
her art has hung in the White House three times, which I think is a really fun, fun little fact for us to think about. Um, this particular photo was taken um, during the Obama administration and her resurrection hung in the one of their dining rooms um, during the duration of the administration. And I'll also mention that her work is part of, um, is in, sorry, is on view at the Phillips Collection. So if you're local to Washington, DC, the Phillips Collection has an exhibition of her work um, that shows a great breadth of her work from her earlier works to these signature color works that we looked at today. And it's on view until January 23rd of 2022. Um, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen for a second. Um, I'm gonna pop into the chat and this might, may, may or may not be helpful, a bunch of different links. Um, to resources for you. And if any of these resources speak to you, um, go ahead and click on them or copy and paste them, copy and paste them into um, a Word document so that you don't lose them when this is over. But I'm just popping into the chat, the link to the exhibition at the Phillips Collection, and then some more information about the artist Alma Thomas from the National Gallery of Art, which is where I which is my context. I've got, I'm popping in right now, some lessons and activities for a pre-K audience. And um, also a lesson on women and art to connect, to sort of do that interdisciplinary connection between art and um, art and gender. All right. So I know we're wrapping up today. And of course I left no time for us to do any talking back or questions, but hopefully folks are connecting either in the chat or popping your questions into the chat. And if you leave me either your email or your full name, if your name isn't up there, um, I'll, get, um, I'll get back to you as well. And um, let's see, Pat, I need to turn this over to you, which I realized I didn't leave you much time for, um, for evaluations. If you wanna unmute and share the process for evaluations. Let's see, as Pat, as Pat is, um, as Pat might be, oh, here she is. There, there you go. go. I am. Um, oh, Pat, go ahead and unmute. Unmute, there we go. I uh, popped the, uh, the link into, into the chat there, if you could do the, the evaluation. And we're gonna be doing some raffles with those and sending out some free books. Amazing. Thank you all so, so much. I realize that we're out of time and we didn't have time for much of a talk back, but I'm popping into the chat my name and my email address. And whether or not you are a DC teacher in DC or a teacher not in DC, we have ways of connecting and supporting, um, supporting you, whether you're local or not. So please feel free to reach out to me, follow up with me. Tim, I hope your daughter enjoyed this experience as well as many of you. And I thank you so much for bringing your full selves to the experience and for inviting yourselves to slow down so that we could create and connect together um, inspired by Alma Thomas and have a wonderful next session. And I will now send you off to send you off to workshop two, which begins in at 1115 Eastern.